We're going to be covering some animation basics in this video. We'll be using runtime permissions and I'll introduce you to a few new functions and events in this video as well. All of this to build off what we've learned a little bit more. We're going to start as usual by creating a brand new box on the ground, creating a new script inside the box. The first thing you need to do is find an animation you want to use and drag it into the contents of the object. You can use any animation for now in the example. I'm just using a simple dance animation. We're only going to make a few small changes to the default script. First, we're going to add a few lines at the top and create two new variables. The first is a vector for the sit position called sit pause. This vector will serve as an offset to where the agent sits on the object. The next variable is a rotation called sit rot. This represents the rotation the agent will be sitting on when they sit down. This variable is holding the zero rotation value of 0, 0, 0, 0001. In the state entry event, you're going to change the LLSay function to an LLSit target function. This function requires two parameters. The first is the vector for the offset of the sit position. We're going to use the sit pause variable for that. The next is the rotation for the sit target, and we're going to use the sit rot rotation for that. Go ahead and save the script, and then go ahead and sit on the box in world, and you'll see that you're sitting one and a half meters above the center of the box. You'll need to set a sit target every time when you're using animations. You can manipulate the script target later in the script too if you need to. Go ahead and open up the script again and let's make a few more changes now. For starters, I added two more variables at the top. The first is a key variable named avatar. We'll be using that in just a moment. The second variable is a string named curanim. We're not even using this variable in the script, but I'll show you where we could. I added an extra line after the sit target function under the state entry event. This is where, if you wanted to, you would define cur anim. Let's start with this new event we've added called the changed event. The changed event requires one parameter, which is an integer representing the value of the change made. There are several change event constants. We're using changed link in this case. This comparative will come back true anytime the number of links changes on the object. If somebody sits on the object, the number of links will change. It also changes when somebody stands up. If the change is in fact the change in the number of links, we'll run these statements. First, we're going to set the value of the avatar variable. In this case, we're using a function called LLAvatarUnsitTarget. This will return the value of whatever avatar is currently sitting on the object. Remember, this is triggered because there was a change in the number of links. So if an avatar is now sitting on the object, this value will be populated with the key for that avatar. If the avatar has stood up, the value will be null key because there's no one sitting on the object. So this first comparative makes sure that the value of avatar is not null key. This exclamation point equal signs represents not equals in LSL. If avatar is not null key, in other words, if somebody is sitting on the object, we're going to run the LL request permission function underneath it. This function has two parameters, a key for the avatar and the type of permissions we're requesting. This is going to trigger the runtime event down at the bottom here. This event captures the value of the type of permissions being requested. In this case, we're requesting permission to trigger an animation. So we have a comparative under here to make sure that is the actual permission being requested in this case. If the permissions requested are in fact permissions to trigger an animation, we'll run these lines underneath the comparative. This first function is the stop animation function. In this case, we're asking it to stop running the default sit animation. Right below that, we're using the start animation function. This function assumes somebody's already sitting on the object and thus only requires one parameter. That parameter is the name of the animation you want to trigger. In this case, to get the name of that animation, we're using another function. That function is the LLGetInventoryName function. This function has two parameters. The first is a constant for the type of inventory item we're looking for, and the second is an integer representing the number in inventory. If we had five animations inside the Prim's inventory, this could be 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. Remember, lists and object counts always start with zero. So this is what happens when somebody sits on the animation. And if they say yes to the requested permissions, the animation will begin playing. When they stand up, the sequence changes. 
once again the changed event is triggered and once again we've changed the number of links by removing one in effect in this case because there is nobody sitting on the object anymore the avatar variable will mean null key now so this conditional will trigger as false now because avatar is null key and again we use the stop animation function this time giving it the parameter of the first and only animation in inventory if we wanted to, we could use the curAnim variable to populate this value as well. Instead of calling the getInventoryName function in multiple places, we could just define the variable here. And then instead of calling the function in these two places, we would just call the variable. Take a look at how this looks in world now when I sit on the object. Now because I'm the owner, I'm not requested to grant permissions. But also notice that I'm a little bit high on the object. I can fix that by just adjusting the offset slightly in this very first vector in the script. Instead of using 1.5, I'll lower it to 1.25. This will set the sit target a quarter of a meter lower. Now it looks much more like I'm dancing on top of the box. I hope that was clear and easy to understand. If you were paying attention to some of my past videos, it shouldn't be too bad. If you do have questions or comments, I welcome you to please put them below. I'm always happy to help if I can. If you like the video, please click the like button and consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one.